Hi everyone, it's Kelly here. If you've been to my channel before, welcome back. If you've not been, welcome. Glad to have you either way. Um, we talk books here on this channel and today I thought I would talk you through the rest of the books that I want to read for the rest of 2022. Um, I've reviewed some challenges that I have committed myself to. Have I overcommitted? Probably. Um, because... <laughs> And you'll see this by the time we get to the end of this video. There are 22 more books that I want to read this year. Um, I also currently have a few books on the go that are here. This one I'm, is not really on the go. I have abandoned it. So um, <laughs> I'm still reading Love Stories by Trent Dalton that I started in February. Um, they're little short stories, so they haven't been... I haven't felt compelled to continue picking them up um, but when I want to read something short I'll, I'll pick it up and read one or two. Um, I'm currently in the middle of Luster by Raven Le Leilani. Um, this is the audiobook that I'm listening to at the moment and I'm not quite halfway through. Uh, I made pretty good progress on this yesterday. <laughs> uh, the Man Who Spoke Snakeish by Andres Kivirak um, which is a book from Estonia that I'm reading for my Around the World um, reading challenge book club um, and I am I would say getting close to halfway through that one so I've got books on the go and there's a couple of others that I've sort of started and, and haven't made much progress on so those are there in the trolley because they're on the go so in addition to those <laughs> I have a whole lot of books that I'd like to get through so that I can complete the challenges that I've set for myself this year I have completely put aside one of the challenges, um, which was to read 10 books on my e-reader. Maybe that will happen, maybe that won't, um, but I'm not including that here because they're not specific uh, prompts um, and titles. It's just I wanted to read some more of uh, the books that I have, the many, many books <laughs> that I have on my um, my e-reader. So this is the these are the books that are specific titles that I know I want to read this year. Um, and they come from a variety of challenges. So I am currently reading the remainder of the long list for the Miles Franklin Literary Award, which is a literary award here in Australia, um, where and I've read all of the shortlist and a couple of the long list. So I've got another four books to go on that one. I'm also I'm trying to read more classic books um, so I've got quite a few of those to go I haven't been attending to that challenge very much this year um, I am hosting the Australian reading challenge I'm almost done with that uh, so I've actually only got two more books to go um, on that challenge excuse me while I turn my note paper over um, then I've got my reading around the world challenge where we're reading one book per month uh, and then I've got a bunch of buddy reads. So I'm going to talk you through what I'm hoping to get to, um, the 22 books I'm hoping to get to by the end of this year. I may have to start getting creative as we get closer to the end and maybe thinking about how books can uh, perhaps meet more than one prompt. Um, but I try to read a separate book for each prompt in these challenges. So let's start with the long list because... There's no choices here. These are the books. Um, so the first one I don't have a physical copy of. It's After Story by Larissa Berent. Uh, I don't really know very much about that story and I don't have it with me, so I can't comment any further. Uh, but I've got an audio book of that uh, coming in this coming month in September. So I should be able to get to that one pretty soon. Um, the next one is called The Magpie Wing by Max Easton. And this is a sort of a coming of age novel set in Sydney where I live. Um, and it's sort of just following these people as they're sort of emerging into their adulthood and navigating their lives um, in, you know, share houses and, you know, at, at gigs and things like that, um, pubs, etc. So, yeah, it's a debut novel. Um, and it moves from the 90s to the present. So it's sort of a 2000s coming of age novel. Um, and it's looking at the, the suburbs, the inner city, um, music scenes, sports scenes, uh, 
political stuff. So it's kind of just exploring that sort of thing. So this should be really interesting, um, and I am looking forward to reading it. Um, but, yeah, one number – no, this is now number two. <laughs> number two of 22. Um, then we've got The Performance by Claire Thomas. This is also a long-listed book for the Miles Franklin Literary Award. Um, and so this is set in um, a theatre, and they are watching – a Samuel Beckett play. Um, so it's it's a bunch of people who are in, in the theatre watching a play um, and it takes place just over the, the course of the play, I believe. Um, and it's sort of, so it's a very much a character-driven book, this one more so than a plot-driven book, I would imagine. Um, and they're going to be, uh, so there's bushfire, bushfires raging outside the city, three women watch a performance of a Beckett play, Margot is a successful professor, preoccupied by her fraught relationship with her ailing husband. Ivy is a philanthropist with a troubled past, distracted by the snoring man beside her. And Summer is a young theatre usher, anxious about the safety of her girlfriend in the fire zone. Um, and the as the performance kind of goes on, their stories will unfold. So this should be quite interesting also just as a kind of character study and... Um, you know, really character development driven book. Um, so I am looking forward to reading that one. Uh, the last book I need to read for the Miles Franklin is Seven and a Half by Christos uh, Cholkas, I believe is how you pronounce his last name. I may be wrong. Um, I've never read any books by this author. Um, this is actually not, um, this is a, an ARC copy. Uh, I didn't get given it uh, to review. I got it, I bought it secondhand um, from someone that was selling it. So um, who really enjoyed this book uh, when I was chatting to him, when I was picking them up. Um, so yeah, I am I am looking forward to this one, though it has got quite mixed reviews. Some people really did dis dislike this book um, and others really love it. So I've heard both sides. Um, so it I, I think it might be one of those books where you either you love it or you or you hate it. Um, so basically, it's almost like a semi autobiographical um, book. So he it's a writer, and so it's kind of about writing a story. But then it's also uh, so he goes to um, a house on the coast to write a book. The uh, the author, um, and then he's. So it's sort of about nature and um, and that sort of thing, but it's also about uh, the story that he's writing. Um, so, yeah, it's a little bit experimental, I believe. So, yeah, anyway, I I think it will be interesting, but I am – this is one that I'm hoping to get to. All right, so that's my books for the long list of the Miles Franklin Awards. Um, then we move on to my classics. This is quite a big pile. Um, the first one that I want to get to is Picnic at Hanging Rock by Joan Lindsay. This is an Australian classic. Now, this one is doing triple duty because it's in my classics challenge. It's also in my Australian reading challenge. So this is one of the books that I will read for that. And I'm also planning on buddy reading it with somebody. So it's actually hitting three. <laughs> um, so we will definitely be reading this one this year because it's um, it's doing a lot, a lot of the heavy lifting. Um, so basically, this is a story about um, a group of girls and they go for a picnic at a place called Hanging Rock. And then I believe one or all of them or some of them disappear. Um, so it's sort of like a mysterious situation. It's not this is not a children's book in the sense of it being light and fluffy. Um this is a this is sort of like a mystery. So I am looking forward to reading this. It's a book that I've heard a lot about. There's a um a film that was made a long time ago that's quite good, I believe. I also haven't seen that. Um yeah, so I'm uh I am looking forward to this one. Uh it is, I believe, not a um so it is for young people. But it was written a while ago, so uh, well, let me see when it was first published. In 1967, so it was written some time ago. So it's sort of of that era, um, and I believe it's set in the past, so even earlier than 1967. I don't think this is 
um, set in that time. So anyway, it should be really, really good. And I am definitely going to be reading that one. Then we move on to uh, The Left Hand of Darkness by Ursula K. Le Guin, which is, uh, I'm saying, a classic science fiction book. Um, so I am looking forward to reading this one. Um, I've heard it highly recommended by many people um, and it should be really, really good. Uh, I am actually already reading this one. So I'm, my husband and I are reading it together um, and we're sort of reading it aloud to one another, reading a chapter each. Um, so we're up to, we've only done, done it twice. Um, so we're up to chapter five, uh, but this is Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. A classic, classic story. I probably don't need to tell you about any of these classics because I'm sure you've heard of them all. Um, uh, I was supposed to read this book when I was in year 10, I believe, uh, and I didn't. And I didn't. And I have regrets. Uh, so I would like to rectify that now. And I'm very sorry to my year 10 English teacher uh, to whom I pretended I had read this book. Sorry, I didn't, but I'm going to. Um, then I'm going to hopefully get to Little Women. Um, I realise that I have three different copies of this book now, um, and this was the most accessible one at the moment, although there is one that you cannot see. Oh, you can see um, here in this box set, but I didn't want to move it because there's like stuff stacked on top of it. So anyway, Little Women um, by Louisa May Alcott, the classic story. Um, I did watch the most recent film that came out um, that was an interpretation of this book and loved it. Um, and yeah, I don't think I have read the book before. Uh, so I would like to rectify that situation. Um, then I had to choose a non-fiction classic. And the one that I chose was Down and Out in Paris and London by George Orwell. Um, and this is a book that my husband has read and he has told me that um, this is, uh, so what George Orwell did was that he lived among the sort of poor and homeless people um, in Paris and London. Um, and then he's written about it, uh, his experience of living with those people. Um, and yeah. Um, yeah, so he was sleeping in bug infested hostels. Uh, working as a dishwasher in Paris, surviving on scraps and cigarette butts, living alongside tramps, um, et cetera, et cetera. So, yeah, it should be really interesting to read about his experience doing that. Uh, then we come to um, a classic that I only found, about, found out about fairly recently, um, and this is Carmilla by Joseph Sheridan Le Fanu. Now, this particular edition is edited by Carmen Maria Machado, who I've read from before. Um, and I very specifically sought out this edition because I wanted to read her introduction. Um, and it's also her, she has, as it said, edited, edited the original text. So um, I am really keen to read this book. Apparently, this is the very first vampire novel um, that I, if I'm not mistaken, um, so this was pre-Dracula. Um, it's just a short little thing and that's got quite a chunky um, introduction um, and it's also illustrated. So yeah, it should be really lovely to read. Um, yeah, quite keen, quite keen to get to this one and I'm going to try and get to it very soon, I think. Uh, then I've got Breakfast at Tiffany's by Truman Capote. I've This is a uh, an author I've never read from before. I do know that he has some other works that are probably um, bigger than this one, um, but I really wanted to read this one. So um, that's the one that I'm going to read. It's just, again, a really short little thing. So hopefully I'll be able to get through that pretty quickly. Um, and finally, uh, I'm going to read A Christmas Party, and I'm going to read this one in December when it's Christmas time, even though it's not cold in Australia at Christmas time. Um, but the prompt was to read a book from somewhere cold. And I have decided that I'd like to read some Christmassy books um, in December if I can. So I figured if I add one to my challenge, then I will hopefully get to it. Six holiday guests find themselves the suspects in a murder inquiry when the old Scrooge who owns a substantial estate is found stabbed in the back. Whilst the delicate matter of inheritance could be the key to this crime, the real conundrum is how any of the suspects could have entered the locked room where the victim was found to commit this foul deed. 
For Inspector Hemingway of Scotland Yard, the investigation is also complicated by the fact that every guest at Lexham Manor is hiding something, casting suspicion far and wide. So this should be really, really good. Um, and I'm looking forward to reading this one a little bit closer to Christmas. Okay, so now we're moving on to my Australian reading challenge. As I mentioned before, I am going to be reading Picnic at Hanging Rock. That's going to meet one of the prompts that I still need to cover. This Then I can't decide between these two, so I'm going to just sort of wait and see what I feel like picking up. Um, so one of the books that I'm um, contemplating is reading Snuggle Pot and Cuddle Pie uh, by Mae Gibbs. So Mae Gibbs is sort of one of our very early, um, in Australia, a very early picture book creator, writer and illustrator. Um, so this is going to have illustrations throughout that were done by Mae Gibbs. These are sort of really classic characters. So these are the little gumnut babies and Snugglepot and Cuddle Pie are the most famous of the gumnut babies. So anyway, that's one of the options of what I might read. Um, the other is a, another classic um, and that is The Magic Pudding by Norman Lindsay, again written and illustrated by him. He's a um, fairly well-known Australian artist um so he's got these fabulous um characters that pop up through this book uh human and otherwise so this should be a good read if i decide to get to it um it's a little bit shorter than uh, in terms of page count than snuggle pot and cuddle pie but i don't know which one one of these okay now i gotta flip the page so then I've got my reading around the world challenge. Now I don't have any physical books here to share with you, uh, mostly because we haven't voted on uh, the books from October to December. So um, what I can say is September, we're going to be reading Too Much Lip by Melissa Lukashenko, which will be a reread for me. Um, so we are reading, this is an Australian author um, and an Australian book. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to that um, and having the chat with my book club about about that book as well um then in october we'll be reading a lebanese book um we're voting on that at the moment um but i don't know what that's going to be yet november will be an italian book and in december will be a tanzanian book um so if you've got any suggestions uh of fantastic and hopefully not too long <laughs> um books for italy or tanzania uh please let me know down in the comments because i'd love to um have a look and investigate and potentially add them to our nominations if they're um if i agree with you <laughs> so please uh, feel free to leave any suggestions for us down in the comments especially if you're from one of those two places <laughs> Um, okay, then we're on to my buddy reads. So I've already told you about Picnic at Hanging Rock. So that, that my, that's my book that's doing triple duty um, and hitting three, three things. Uh, but I've also committed to buddy reading um, quite a few books. So the first one um, is Sexing the Cherry by Jeanette Winterson. I was supposed to buddy read this with the buddy I'm reading it with in May. Um, and we just haven't gotten to it. Neither of us have. So we're not letting, we're only letting ourselves down really. Um, but yeah, that is a book that I would like to try and read this year if I can, um, because we were committing to read it back in May. Um, so that's that one. I've also committed to read Frankenstein um, in October uh, with a, a group of people. Um, so... I'm hoping that I will be able to participate in that buddy read um, to be able to chat with those people about the book. Um, so that should be good. Again, it's not too long, um, although the writing is very small in these. I do have another edition um, of it as well that I may read from. I haven't decided yet, um, but let me see how many pages this one is. 247. So either way, it's looking like it's going to be a little bit of a read. Anyway, um, another one that I'm going to read that I don't have a copy of with me is The Woman in the Library by Sulari Gentil or Gentil. Um, that I have agreed to buddy read. <laughs> and then the last one is The Chonka um, of this beautiful book that I 
purchased a little a little bit ago, uh, Pandora by Susan Stokes Chapman. Um, this is a retelling of the Pandora myth. So, um, and I, I know I've shown this before on my channel, but just in case you missed that video, look at how beautiful the pages are. So they've got sprayed up here and then this beautiful design sprayed on, um, on that part of the spine, sprayed blue down here as well. It's so beautiful. Anyway, I figured, um, given that someone wanted to buddy read this book that, and I had purchased this book that I would join in in the buddy read. Um, but this may have been a bit of an <laughs> over commitment because it is quite a long book. Let me just check the page count. Four hundred and nine. Oh no, that's still the acknowledgements. Four hundred and five. Four hundred and five pages. I commit myself to these things. So that is my stack. I'm not going to attempt to pick it up uh, because it's quite big. Um, plus all of the other books that um, I mentioned that I don't have a physical copy of uh, either at the moment or um, I'm going to be reading it on uh, my e-reader e or as an audiobook. So, uh, yeah, I've got my work cut out for me if I want to hit all of these goals. I'm trying to be philosophical about it because in the past I think I've been quite... Um, uh, I've I've wanted myself to meet all of these goals so badly that I've been pushing myself in December and December is always such a busy month. Um, so I'm going to try to be kind to myself and to not worry if I don't hit all of all of these goals. I hope that regardless of whether I actually get to all of these books or not by the end of the year, that I will get to them all at some point. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm hopeful. Uh, I've been reading at a pretty good pace this year. Um, I'm just about to hit my overall yearly goal of the number of books, which I have set as 52 because I figure one book a week is a pretty reasonable target. And anything else that I read on top of that is going to, is just bonus. So I've all, I'm already going to be there um, in terms of my goal of how many books I wanted to read this year. Uh, so it's just a matter of, Am I going to get to all of these specific books or not? Um, and I hope I do. Uh, but if I don't, I'm going to try to be kind to myself and not be pushing myself in December to try and read more of these books. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, let me know what's on your TBR for this year. What are the books that you absolutely really, really definitely want to get to uh, before the end of the year. We're heading into September now, um, very soon. And I know it's uh, starting to kind of like, we're in the last third of the year here. So I really want to get some, um, get some movement on these goals. And I need to stop getting dazzled by shiny new books um, and reading those instead of these ones that are on my TBR. So I've cleared my cart. All of my other books that were sort of books that I had aside as potential books that I wanted to read have moved to a different section, this section up here, which is my soon <laughs> section as opposed to my TBR. And I'm going to pop these or as many of them as I can fit on the top shelf of my um, reading cart because I want to make sure that those are the books that I'm seeing and potentially picking up um, over the next couple of months as we head towards the end of the year. So love to know um, if any of these are also in your TBR as well. So please let me know if you're going to be reading any of these particular books before the end of this year um, or if they're ones that you're hopeful that you'll get to at some point. Um, and let me know, as I said, what you're going to be reading uh, for, the, for, the, for the rest of this year. Are there particular things that you really, really want to get to um, that you're you want to get it down in writing so that um, you can feel that level of commitment <laughs> um, because I know certainly for me that does help to, to, to sort of say it out loud to somebody or to put it in writing somewhere um, just to kind of keep yourself accountable to the things that you're hoping to achieve. Um, but also be kind to yourself too. <laughs> All right, guys, I'll see you on the next one. Bye.